So uh, more cloud stuff. Uh, I'll try to keep it short because uh, I believe you guys might want to leave soon. Uh, all right. So uh, this is going to be just like an overview talk uh, discussing about like some of the cloud RSEs. Uh, the benefits, challenges, and the roadmap that we have ahead of us in Atlas, and maybe see if other communities um, could draw some benefits from the efforts which are going on uh, within Atlas uh, for this. So um, there are quite some use cases, uh, like potential use cases for cloud um, being, uh, and like, these are just some of the ones that I could think of. Uh, so helping WLCG sites fulfill their re, uh, pledges. So that's something that Mario was describing as one of the Atlas sites, which is currently experimenting with uh, delivering a part of their pledge uh, over cloud. Um, and then also uh, clouds may present as opportunistic resources. So having our technical infrastructure uh, set up in a way that we can actually make use of them uh, would be something beneficial. So the need of data, uh, so one thing that's clear from this conference is uh, we have a lot of data requirements and they're only going to grow. So the idea would be to evaluate if, uh, yeah, to evaluate like if clouds can uh, help supercharge uh, some of these uh, storage requirements. So other slides on our chair, I see. Okay. All right, so uh, there are use cases like uh, running your um, like analysis uh, jobs in the cloud itself. So an example of that is the uh, stretched uh, Kubernetes fabric project from University of Chicago. And SEAL is doing something similar uh, with their collaboration with University of Utah. So where they basically, and like at CERN, we like, I think who mentioned uh, the SWAN, uh, the Jupyter Notebook extensions and SWAN uh, projects. Uh, but here, uh, essentially in the case, like who ends up paying for all of this uh, is generally our own uh, data centers are uh, like it might come from the communities uh, whereas uh, with clouds we could uh, offload this to the users and the cloud to manage uh, how to sort these uh, uh, financial transactions or financial aspects of such use cases also uh, let's say there's uh, big conferences coming up uh, the load on the like the analysis load on your usual infrastructure goes high uh, which may interfere with the actual requirements uh, of the experiments. So with clouds, it could be a good, um, they could present a good possibility where uh, like some institute puts a credit card for their uh, scientists uh, to use uh, more resources than what's actually available uh, by the default pledges. Uh, and this use case could be chiral storage. So since we know egress uh, is the one that costs the most, but if there's already data that uh, we know we are not planning to fetch for a while, uh, we can always uh, put it for uh, put it in clouds. And then, uh, yeah, the uh, there's some like uh, dreams and ideas where uh, somewhere in the future, let's say we have multi-cloud setups uh, where the transfer uh, between clouds does not even need to use our infrastructure, but um, uses their own, uh, so that could be something nice to see if uh, if we get there in the future. Uh, additionally, cloud caches uh, could be something useful uh, in order to make data accessible in different parts of the world uh, where it might be needed. So, um, yeah, so moving data to the job um, or job to the data argument uh, could benefit a bit. Uh, with cloud caches. It needs my cursor. Yeah.
right so there are a lot of challenges though and i'm pretty sure like we all are aware of uh, like based, anyone i've talked to about clouds like these keep coming up uh big categories would be financial operations network and other technical challenges starting with uh, the idea of costs because uh, there are multiple dimensions to how we measure uh, costs uh, so time money uh, network bandwidth failure retry rates and so on so in the conventional grid side to grid side transfers uh, the idea has been to minimize uh, the time it takes from source to destination. Uh, when you put in a cloud site, uh, then you ha you need to factor in uh, the money and also the network bandwidth uh, to not saturate uh, the public networks uh, that link the sites. So, yeah, so the distance uh, right now is essentially a measure um, of course, so we are measuring costs as distances uh, for WLCG sites. Uh, for clouds, we need some more advanced systems to be able to control uh, yeah, the financial uh, costs that come with those. Um, one of the things is that users must not be able to exceed the usage thresholds that are set, uh, set up in uh, for the cloud RSEs. Um, there can be multiple billable items on which these thresholds could be set. Uh, so the actual amount of data stored, the ingress, egress, uh, there are things like if the cloud providers do encryption and replication by themselves, uh, they might charge you for that. Um, so there, uh, so with Rucio, uh, we should be able to track the three items that are listed on the slide which is uh, the amount of data stored and the ingress and egress. Uh, but for any additional uh, cost parameters, uh, we would require the provider specific billing API connections. Uh, so there's this, uh, so in this 36 release, essentially we are making um, efforts to integrate cloud cost management in Rucio. Uh, and that's the issue number which currently links to a doc uh, where uh, where these initial concepts and ideas are being built. Uh, but as an overview, uh, we are planning to make some changes within Rucio, essentially by extending the definition of account usage and account limit uh, to somewhat uh, reflect the dollar values uh, which are assigned uh, to these uh, Rucio accounts. Uh, for a given cloud RSE, uh, and then also introduce some uh, RSE attributes where uh, operators or uh, site admins are able to set uh, thresholds uh, on how much, uh, like uh, what's the total uh, usage for this particular RSE that is allowed. Uh, for the conveyor, so when the uh, we would add a check uh, to make sure that the uh, limits are not exceeded. If it happens, uh, then the transfers would be rejected. And uh, similarly for upload and download clients, we need to add similar checks. Uh, for the egress side of things, uh, the place where we have some control in Rucio is where we generate signed URLs. And uh, that's the part uh, where we would add a similar check. Um, for more, uh, so this is kind of like the initial phase one plan, uh, which is uh, something that would apply to almost any cloud provider uh, that gets configured and that we end up working with. Uh, additionally, for the provider-specific APIs, uh, after some discussions with Martin, Mario, it makes more sense uh, to have some kind of a probe that essentially queries these uh, third-party APIs. Uh, and then updates the account usage uh, based uh, based on uh, the actual usage that's reflected uh, in these uh, billing dashboards. Uh, and if there is uh, like something exceeds, then maybe it also notifies uh, or raises an alarm uh, for the relevant party. So uh, the next challenge is around networks. Uh, so most of the cloud providers are not on any of the scientific peering networks. Um, 
essentially this leads to two big problems. Uh, you can saturate the public uh, internet links of uh, conventional uh, WLCG sites if you're moving data uh, from cloud to them. Uh, and then uh, the second one is uh, the costs, uh, which I already covered in the previous section. Um, so this is something that we, uh, so the way we currently deal with one of this uh, with Seal and Atlas is we do a multi-hop transfer. Uh, trying to keep uh, the data as much as possible on our um, like in the on in the peer networks, and then uh, finally uh, with one I think AGLT two uh, pushes it uh, to the sealed data centers. Uh, a temporary solution, but not a good one. There is also operational challenges. Now this may depend on the communities. This is more from the Atlas uh, perspective. Uh, for example, uh, integrating these uh, providers in these usual systems for declaring downtimes or information catalogs um, is something that is not as uh, straightforward, uh, at least for us. Uh, similarly, uh, the consistency checking parts and uh, storage resource reporting do not come out of the box uh, with any of these cloud providers. And like I was mentioning in the tutorial yesterday, might be a challenge for us since we are using Adler uh, 32s, which most of these guys uh, are very likely not to support. Uh, but anyway, so after the challenges, uh, like despite them, how would you go about doing it? Uh, for which uh, essentially I would point, just summarize the tutorial uh, from yesterday. Uh, so you would inject uh, the IGTF certificates uh, in the load balancer of the cloud provider. Uh, then you need to configure um, FTS uh, with the access uh, and secret keys from the cloud providers, uh, which we saw on the Ruchio side, there is a RSE accounts or CFG or credentials or JSON, uh, where you need to add the additional access and secret key parameters. Uh, so that Rushio upload, download, and list replicas are able to communicate uh, directly with the cloud provider uh, to do what they're supposed to do. And this is what we saw in the tutorial yesterday as well. Uh, and yeah, so that's essentially in a nutshell uh, how this is done. For more details, I would refer back uh, to yesterday's tutorial again. So uh, the clouds that we are working so far, uh, so Amazon had uh, was one of them, one of the earliest ones. Uh, currently, Seal and Google are the active uh, collaborations. Um, so as for Seal, uh, I believe Matt gave a pretty good presentation. Uh, but to summarize, it's an R&D project uh, where we are investigating uh, the different challenges and trying to overcome them when it comes to integrating uh, cloud storage uh, within Ruchio. Uh, so we saw in Matt's talk that like they provide a S3 interface and then how it's linked to their IPFS backend and the Filecoin network. Um, so for Atlas, they have pledged uh, 10 petabytes of storage of which uh, we have used around five petabytes uh, at the moment. Uh, so the some of the developments that we are trying to do with Seal is uh, so they now support Adler 32 checksums. Uh, so we are able to do this checksum verification whenever data is sent to Seal. So that's done by responding to these uh, one digest requests from FTS. Uh, additionally, uh, they are also uh, like they'll probably be one of the first clouds where we are able to test this cloud cost management developments with, um, and uh, also the consistency checking uh, being hooked up to the Rushi auditor uh, is something uh, we are doing with Seal. Uh, and as soon as they are on uh, ESNet, uh, we, we should hopefully get away from uh, this multi-hop trick that I was describing a bit earlier and might be able to uh, send uh, higher throughputs of data more reliably to them. Uh, a lot of uh, the details about uh, the plans with SEAL are in the SEAL the deal document, uh, but in the short term, uh, we are uh, essentially looking to generate the consistency check reports 
because uh, for over two years of operation, we did not actually uh, do any of these consistency checks, which led to a lot of uh, lost files. So Ruscio thought the files were registered, uh, but for some reason, um, like several reasons, they were not actually present at the storage. So the production jobs uh, would come back with the errors uh, that, uh, yeah, the file does not exist at storage. Um, and then there is a storage and transfer overview of uh, how we go about filling up these 10 pibs. Um, when they are on SNET, SEAL has expressed interest in uh, trying to do somewhat of a um, data challenge, but not really in terms of uh, like they just want to test how much throughput uh, they can pull uh, once they are on SNET. And uh, the demonstration of the cloud cost management capabilities that we built in Ruscio. Uh, for the Google Cloud, I think Mario already summarized this in his talk. So I'll just skip over this one. Uh, so in general, um, I think before the next Ruscio workshop, our plans uh, or the direction we are working on are uh, the Google Phase 3, the SEAL uh, stuff, uh, the cloud cost management models. Uh, maybe we'll have more, uh, let's say, progress or information or details on how we go about consolidating fine-grained access control. Uh, with cloud RSEs. Right now it works in an all or nothing. Essentially, if you have the access key and secret key, uh, you can write uh, to the bucket irrespective of what your Ruscio identity uh, is. Uh, and then uh, uh, exploring these cloud-specific transfer uh, tools uh, to try to offload some network traffic from our own. So that that's it uh, from me. Any questions? Thanks a lot, my young uh, questions from the room. Martin. It's not so much a question for my young, but a general, like, I'm just throwing this out there. Should we try to get away of Atlas 32 and kind of coin something more commonly used? Uh, I think this, I mean, this has a lot of implications, I'm sure, but if you move more and more into the cloud direction, I mean, they, like very likely they will not support this, right? So we need to have MD5 or, or uh, SHA uh, there anyway. I think for Russo clients now for uh, uploads, we do calculate both Atlas 32 and MD5. Doesn't solve it for old files, but I'm wondering if we should make a, somewhat of a stronger push for some more commonly used checksumming um, and if this will pay off in the longer run. So, Martin, this might mean we have to rehash the data, which uh, can be a pretty long operation and compute intensive. Perhaps, maybe not. I mean, maybe we'll just ignore it at uh, certain, and we rehash it on demand. Um, oh. More questions? Then let's thank Mayank again.